Okay, in this tutorial, we'll continue with the Python expressions, but now we're going to use a conditional statement. And it sounds fancy, but it's not. It's kind of just like I'm saying, um, if it's after 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm leaving work. All right, it's the condition. So the, one of the conditional statements is an if statement, just like that. So let's go grab a color first. So I'll grab the info window real quick, like we've seen in the previous tutorial, and I'll just change the color of this object here. And that gives me the command like we've seen. I'll right click on it and press Control C. Now I don't need this window like this. So down in here, I'll just use a condition. I'll set a variable, say for instance, for maybe I'm going to change this to the color green, and I'll say green color is equal to 0 0.2. I'm just going to be its initial value. And that's a really good idea. It's in uh, computer programming, you can't just usually set a variable. You have to give it a value at the same time. All right, so with it set to 0 0.2, now I'm going to use a conditional statement. I'm going to check on the value of that green color. And if it is set to a particular value, then I'm going to change it to that value that I'm looking for. So the conditional statement looks like this. It says if, and what I'm going to look for is the value of green color. So I'm going to say if green color, and here's the important part of this statement is I'm comparing it to in this case I want to say if it's equal to something it could I could say if it's less than or greater than or less than an equal but when I just want to do equal I just say I have to use two equal statements in here versus when I'm assigning a value I use a single equal statement and this is common through other languages C++ C things like that this is just standard programming practice these days so if green color is equal to say, I'm going to say 0 0.5, and conditional statements have to end with a colon as well, and I'm going to press enter, and there's those three dots like we saw with the for loop, and now I'm going to press tab, because now I want things to occur within this if statement. So um, maybe I'll put a couple commands, I'll say print green color, like that, and then another statement, I've got to tab that as well. And then I'm going to press Control V to use that color assignment command. But instead of having an explicit value in here for the green color like this, I'm going to change it to, say, green color like that. OK. And so now it'll change that. Maybe I'll change this red to something else up in here. Maybe 0 0.6. All right. So what should happen is if if green color is equal to 0 0.5, then I'm going to print that value and I'm going to change it to this color right here. All right. So now I press return. It's waiting to see if I want to add another command to the if underneath the if statement to be in that group. And since I don't, I'm just going to press return again and see if anything happens. Well, nothing should happen because I've already pre-assigned green color to 0 0.2, and I'm asking if it's equal to 0 0.5. And I press return, nothing happens, just like I expected. Now, herein lies the issue. This is Python code. This is exactly the kind of stuff that I would use when I'm writing a Python routine via the scripting window like this, except what I would do is I would create a file, enter in my code in here, then I could save it within here to execute at any time later. Well, no, the problem with that I'm facing now is that when I'm in here, I have no way to save this because I'm working in an interactive Python console, all right? So in order to try and run this again, I'm going to have to just re-change these commands. So while I'll, use, I'll take advantage of the history, and I'll up arrow to that green color there. I'm going to change it to 0.5 and hit return. And then I'm going to have to up arrow to that if statement as well. It's in here somewhere with my other stuff. Once I get to it, I'm going to hit, oh no, there it's, yeah, that's the one I want. And I'm going to hit return. And then from here, you can press the down arrow and it'll look at the previous color, previous commands. So then I can hit return. I'll hit down arrow now. I'll hit return. And then I can continue. And now, since green color is set to 0 0.5, it should execute that statement, print out the value, and change the color. Let's see what happens. All right, so there it prints the value, and let's go see if it actually gives us this color, which should be 0 0.6, 0 0.5, and 0 0.732828. And let's see what it is. So 0 0.6, 0 0.5, and 0 0.733, it displays like that. All right, so there you have it. So 
you can see a conditional statement in Python is really simple. In effect, in a lot of programming languages, it's really simple. A lot of it just comes down to the syntax of the programming language, how it's formatted. The most important thing, or one of the most, is on conditional statements in loops, they have to end with a colon, and anything that has to be grouped into it must be indented by a tab. You can actually have spaces, but use a tab. Tab indents it to the proper location for doing that. And then, of course, if you wanted to then really start writing Python code, you would just type that into a file, save it as a file, and then you could just reuse it over and over again. And that's really where the power starts coming in. Then you can start creating groups, gr a group of code, and put that into a method. And a method is like a function, if you're familiar with that. And then you can name that, and then you can call that method or function to do that, and it just keeps growing, and then it becomes super, super powerful as you go along. Okay, well that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.